previously on how to get your wife to divorce you for just only thirty dollars I picked up these two mowers for guess what thirty dollars uh, we have two old snappers one's an old 30 inch one from the 70s and then we got this old 80s nah, 41 inch snapper mower the first one we're actually going to be working on in this series I did a quick talk through explaining what were my plan is for these machines we gave it a good solid washing and then after we washed it we did a good and solid inspection of it and see what we needed to buy what we can get away with and the general inspection of the rust so and then after that we got it back up on this back stand here connected to a pallet uh, mover we did a uh, full inspection underneath of it and then after that we took the uh, deck cover off to see what kind of damage we got underneath the cover so with that said, let's move on to the rest of the episode. Okay, it's been a couple days. Uh, we've had some developments. Mainly it's been raining outside, so I have not had a chance to get any of this outside to wash it because... Well, what's the point of power washing stuff if it's still raining outside? Not enough time to really dry anything with the sun. That said, I've been able to get to work on ordering parts. We got new front tires, new pull rope. We got a uh, new starter. New starter? Yep, yep, that's new starter. That's the old pull assemblies off both mowers there. We got some wire wheels from my angle grinder. Big uh, back tires here with valve stems, uh, carburetor, boots for the axles on either side with appropriate grease, and some other random stuff. Oh, new coil for the uh, motor. And I think pretty much everything I need to uh, get started on this. First thing I'm going to do though is get these tires off because they're in horrible shape. They hold no air, and this thing is absolute nightmare to push with these tires because they're so old and dry rotted that when you start to roll them they get stuck on here and you can see where i was pulling it into the garage here and you can't see the tracks anymore and i was literally just dragging it across pavement and dirt and it sucks so i actually think the first task i'm going to do is we're going to get these wheels off and changed and get the new tires on them that way I can roll it outside much easier because I'm going to use this cart here to put that on there so I can roll that out because that is one heavy son of a gun. Uh, I don't know what they made this out of, but it's heavy. Then it'll be much easier to put it on that, roll it out there, power wash it, flip it over on it, power wash the underneath again, and then let it dry outside when the sun comes out. Same thing with this. Once I get new tires on it, I can roll it outside, power wash it, lift it up, get the rest of this dirt and crud out of here power wash all that out and then we can start from somewhat clean base I still have to pick up uh, a new snapper paint although I found some nice options that would work very well for this that way we can start getting it cleaned up painted get the motor running get the deck all set up I still have to pick up a new belt for that although I'm starting to regret cutting this belt because, well never mind yeah this belt was in rough shape <clears throat> so that's the current plans we're going with today. Oh, and I have to re-weld it. There's a bracket right here that's broken. Right there. Uh, I'm going to try getting that re-welded as soon as possible, too. So, we got our work cut out for us today. Well, not for today. For the next couple days. I already got a buyer lined up that wants to buy this really badly. I really kind of want to keep it. I think the plan right now is, though... Let's get to work on it and see where we end up. We still need a battery, too. The battery's obviously dead as a doornail. We'll get that out of there. And a few other small parts, like a new throttle cable. I'm going to see if I can get this off of here. I'll start sending oil through it. And maybe hopefully get it loose enough so it'll work. Otherwise, I don't know. We'll see. I'm not going to take the motor out like I originally planned. All right. Now, nah, there's no need to take the motor out. Why make more work for myself than I absolutely need to? Let's get these wheels off. We got three bolts and uh, somebody's fix it for this. Yeah, we'll have to get this out of here. Get these bolts off. 
and we'll get these wheels off. I already took the clip off of here. Check. Ooh, sorry, I took the clip off of there. Yeah, let's get to work on this. And we'll see. And we'll get these tires changed out so we can get the work on. Getting it washed so we can actually get the real work done. So bear with me. I'm going to get this camera set up so we can get these wheels off. And I'll show you how to do the small tire and the big tire. I've already made a video on how to change tires, so nothing new there. So I might just blow past it and just go right to uh, the final job. We'll see. We'll see how entertaining it is. How about that? Okay, everybody. All right. Now that we dealt with some other messes, aside from this machine, um, we're going to get these wheels off, change out these tires, like I said. Uh, for the front, you just got this, this little cotter pin right here. We just pull that out. The wheel comes right off. Matter of fact, let's... I've already bent the tabs on this one. Come on, you. There she goes. Dirty as anything. Uh, I think what I'm going to do first on that one is clean it with brake clean. And then we're going to clean it all off. And, uh, that's the dust shield right there. It fell off. Eh, the bearings don't look too bad. They didn't have a whole lot of rattle on them. But we're going to clean it up, wire wheel it, and then repaint these wheels uh, the white that they're supposed to be. I took the valve cores out of them to let the air, any additional air out so we can easily break the speed on them, which we'll do later. And I'll go ahead and clean all this up. That's part of the extra heavy duty. The normal, uh, the normal uh, snappers, they just got a piece of bent rod with a bolt that goes through, or a piece of bent rod. These ones got a ball style one for it's supposed to be smoother more robust there's supposed to be plastic bushings in there too they're all pretty much broken and gone and to get the rear wheel off we just got these three lug bolts here that come right out i am going to take this plate off here because we got to take it off anyways uh i'm going to fix this bolt it's supposed to be like a wedge bolt from what i remember it looks like they probably lost it, and there's a little bit of rotation there with the axle, which means it's probably wallowing the axle out, and I don't want to do that too much. <clears throat> so, honestly, not much anything special. I'm going to get these wheels off, and we're going to get them mounted up on my homemade tire changer, and we're going to get to work at taking these out, uh, these tires apart and putting new tires on there. I'll show the big tire and the small tire on each side, and... Because you've all saw me change tires before, so I'm not going to bore you with going through all the details. But first things first, we got to get this, these tires off and then start cleaning up all the rust off them so we can repaint them and then mount new tires on. So I'll be right back here in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little trick with this one. These small tires can be a bit difficult. We're going to plant the vise, the back uh, the rim here. Careful not to bend it. <clears throat> and close as the bead as possible and then we're just going to squeeze this together and break the bead and we're going to flip it over and do the same thing if you all know an easier trick i am up for learning it there we go that's one Other than actually buying a real uh, bead breaker. There we go. Alright. Get this one off and we're going to go for the uh, big tire. Be right back. And you might be seeing this out of order too because I think I'm going to put all the tire part here in the uh, same section that way it's uh, easier to follow when I go bouncing back and forth repeatedly uh, let's get our tube out of there and if she wants to you know sometimes it gets stuck to the rubber in there and sometimes it's just easier just to take it all apart in one go 
And there we go. Definitely need some cleaning up, but the uh, bead surface is actually in pretty good shape. So, yeah. We'll go with that. Okay, for the big tires, the back tires, we're doing something a little bit different. I used the axle flange off the machine itself and bolted up reverse style. You actually see the white imprint where the flange usually sits. I did this for a reason. The easiest way of doing these tires is to do them reverse now. Basically, this is the back side of the rim, the front side of the rim that faces out. You got all this metal here that you got to cover over. You want to get the tire beads once they're off the uh, bead here. You want them down in here. It gives you the most room to work with. Now, if you're trying to work the tire from over here, you got to cross all that space versus this space. So I reverse it down. That way I can get the tire bead right in there and work it off a lot easier. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll have to work the rubber off of the bottom part here. All right, back at it now. Now that I got it worked off there, it was a little bit tough getting over here. Look how clean that paint is. Look how long this tire's been on here. Funner than working with old dry rotted ass tires. I mean, look at how dry rotted that is. And the reason I'm putting these tires on here, like I said, this thing is a nightmare to roll across the driveway so I can power wash it easier. So that's just why I'm going to go ahead and just do these wheels now, change out the tires now. That way I don't have to deal with it. Uh, it'll make it a lot easier for moving it around so I can actually get my work done. So bear with me, we're going to get these wheels cleaned up, we're going to get a fresh coat of paint on them, and we're going to get this new rubber mounted. Yeah, I love it when it fights. Speaking of which, new rubber. It's cheap, but it'll last as long as the metal does. Same with these big girls. They're, bit, they're so much more pliable than those old tires world of difference let me tell you let me know what you all think about this uh the direction i'm going i'm kind of curious how everybody thinks this is going because like i said i'm a professional mechanic i'm an amateur restorer so i'm always curious to criticisms let me know how you think this is going anything i could have done better or easier or cheaper i'm always open to cheaper options let me know though i appreciate it Let's get to work on these wheels, though, and let's get them finished up so we can roll this old pig around. Okay, so, we got our wheels set up. Got one done already. Painted. Actually, all the wheels are painted now. Went ahead, wire brushed them all down. I got them ready to put the new rubber on. What I'm using... You can use a tire slide or whatever uh, brand you use. I like tire slide. Or you can use ordinary bubbles, like uh, children's blowing bubbles. This stuff works pretty good for it. It dries 
the formula they use is meant to dry with no residue because you know children so it works really well for this kind of application and it's not like we're you know driving cars or anything like that but like before you're working your first bead down into the, the crevice there and but we're adding tubes this time I think we added tubes last time I can't remember either way line up your hole with your valve stem And this is the hardest part a lot of people always have trouble with is trying not to pinch the tire inside there I like to get started grab a pair of vice grips to hold the valve stem in place Make it tighter Make it not tight there we go so you don't drop the valve stem back inside the rim I just like to fold and push though so it goes in there even, even it doesn't uh, twist about. There we go. <clears throat> From there, I readjust it. There we go. I like to keep the valve stem on the other side. It puts less pressure on the actual valve stem. Because you're pulling it towards you, but just pushing it further in the hole. Giggity. And then from there, like usual, slip it into the crevice there. And then use my hand to push on it. And this is the part that I don't like because I just painted these rims and I can see the paint already just not having a good time because I didn't let it sit long enough to dry. Like well, completely cure. In a hurry. Usually the spray paint you want to give it a good solid week or two to fully cure. It's what the dry times usually are. I'm not sure about modern tires. They might be slightly different don't dig too deep with this because you'll puncture a hole right in your uh, tire or your tube I mean there we go now we're going to set this off the side keep the vice grip on the valve stem and that way it doesn't drop in there so when we refill it we can appropriate move it where we need to we get some rags I'll clean up these rims a little bit I mean, it didn't scratch them up too bad but you know how it goes All right, second verse, basically same as the first. Uh, well, apply lubricant, general amounts, because nobody likes going in dry. Well, I'd hope most people don't want to go in dry. That's just just makes a painful experience for both sides. All right, again, we got it flipped upside down so we can get the uh, bead right in here and ride through it. First one should go on relatively easy. Just go work it just a little bit. Try not to destroy all my hard work. And this is where another trick comes in handy. I'm not sure if I showed this one before. Using a pair of vice grips to hold onto the rim here. This prevents the tire from riding up and over the rim. You see it prevents it from pulling back up and now time for the fun part trying to get the tire down into the groove so we can ride the rest of the weight around so why should go fight around it come on there she goes Now she's in there. Man, I used to be able to do this so much faster. I worked on tires all the time. Probably not the best method. As I've said before, if you've got a better way of doing it, let me know. I'm always up. Oh, I'll take that off there. I'm always up for newer, better, cheaper, easier. All of the above ways of doing things. And I don't like working harder, I like working smarter, and you know, I also like working cheaper too. So, uh, let's get some air in these and we'll get these mounted up onto the machine. I like these though a lot because 
that long rim face there allows it to start sealing a lot sooner. So you don't have to worry about uh, getting a bead buster and getting a lot of air in there or throwing a strap around there. So that should make life a lot easier. Clean these rims up right. Uh, I hate that. It left a little mark on the inside of the rim. Did it on the other one too. Oh well. Uh, we'll be right back here and we'll get on to the next uh, phase here. And that brings me over in, in back inside the shop. We got new shoes for the snapper here. And we went ahead and pre uh, pressure washed her standing up on her back end and laying down again, or well, back on her wheels. Um, not perfect, but better than it was. One of the tubes ended up having a leak in it in the front wheels. I ended up ha luckily I had a spare tube laying around, so I was able to swap it out real quick. No real major loss. We pressure washed inside here, got all the crud I possibly could with my pressure washer, and tried to clean it up as best as I could the way it is. We are going to take the wheels back, back wheels back off again, because I have to replace the boots, and part of that is taking the tire off, taking the uh, fender off, and taking the transmission assembly out, which is a good time to do the cleaning, changing the oil grease, the double lock grease in there, and get everything else done. I'm going to leave the motor in here because everything cleaned up pretty well, but I am going to take some of these tins off and try to paint them, or at least get this exhaust out of the way. I'm going to try to clean this up and make it look a lot better than it was. I haven't figured out how I'm going to do that yet, but I'm going to get it done. And like I said, just try to repaint what I can so it looks a lot better than it looks right now. Look like you don't need a tetanus shot to get this machine done. <clears throat> well, wheels are on. We're ready to go for the next phase. Let me know what you think, uh, what you all think, what I should do next, where I should go. Is it good enough as is, or should I go ahead and strip everything down to paint it, or should I just find a happy medium? And I'm kind of leading towards a happy medium, just breaking down what I have to paint and all try to cover all the rust. So I try to wire wheel all the brush, uh, ugh, wire wheel all the rust down, then paint it, and just leave. You know, it's an older mower. This thing was built back in the late '80s, possibly early '90s. I think the late '80s. So it's going to need some other stuff. I'm going to replace the throttle assembly there because it is frozen, I think. I'm going to try lubing it up once I get this bracket off. And start working on getting the carburetor out here. We've got to get the fuel tank off, that off, but first things first. We're going to get the deck done first. We're going to get the seat and the tank off too because I'm going to need to get that off to get some paint done. Paint up this handle too and tighten up the bracket because it's got a lot of play in it. But she looks good. It's a positive step in the right direction. As I've said, let me know what you think. If there's anything I'm missing on these motors, because I'm far from an expert on this. Let me know. I'm always open for criticism and learning some new stuff about these. So we'll catch you all later, and we'll see what kind of more trouble I can get myself into. Later.